Cup standings as we move now to Kurt Brugger and Billy Huber of Italy. Third after the first run. This year, they're second in the overall standings. They have just one win. Look at them, how hard they have to steer for that first left-hand curve. Again, two people on that sled. It's very difficult to steer that sled. Just the weight wants to swing you up onto the wall. Exactly. Kurt Brugger, Billy Huber, one of two brothers uh, who not only slide in the doubles event, but the brothers also slide in the single. And into that 270-degree uh, Kreisel curve, look for any looping. That's a sled moving up and down. Of course, you don't want the sled to hit the walls. You're going to lose time. Well, they've got a good run going. Every once in a while, you can see that foot dropping. Every time that foot drops, you're going to start losing time. It slows the sled down. Good competition as we're constantly getting a, a new leader here, and now it is Brugger and Billy Huber. It's one way to put the brakes on. A two-run total, 131.49. Get a chance here to see a portion of their run. Let's take a look at the, the smoothness of the line as they drop out of that curve, set themselves up for that next set. Well, they've got to be very happy with that run. The track is in great condition. It's very fast. They've had a good run. Well, here we go to the number one sled in the 1992-93 season. Hans-Jörg Raffel and Norbert Huber are not known for their strong starts. But nonetheless, they get some very good times. They're consistent sliders. They're very experienced. Let's look at their start. As you can see, it's not as powerful. But they will pick things up half the other portion of the course. Well, how do you recover from a bad start or a slow start when you need one? Momentum is so important. Well, there's no question. Whatever you lose at the top, you're not going to be able to gain. But again, they know the lines. They have the experience. They know where to shave off those thousands of a second. It's a very technical sport. This is Hans Jörg Raffel and Norbert Huber. They were second after the first run. They had three wins in seven races this year on the World Cup circuit. Actually, the first three races of the year. Very good, very experienced. Having a little bit of a problem with the curve. Again, they've got to lay back. Don't want to do any steering. There they are in first place. So they just keep knocking each other off the number one spot. They have replaced Kurt Brugger and Wilfried Huber. Brother Norbert has moved in uh, to first place along with Hans-Jörg Raffel. Let's take a look at the positioning on the sled, how tight it is. This is the exit of the straightaway into that 270 degree curve, the Kreisel, nice line, no looping, very smooth. Back up to the top now, third in the world last year, and they've won the last two races as we look again at Hans-Jörg Raffel and Huber, who are number one right now. But this is Stefan Krause and Jan Berndt, the leaders after the first run. Third in the world this year. They won the last two races after that great start by the other sled. These two have been together since uh, the age of 10 as sledders, but they grew up together in Ilmenau in Germany. Again, they're the perfect size for this sport. Krauss being a lot larger than Berndt. It's a good fit on the sled. They complement each other, and their experience certainly helps them to drive the course. Nice into the straightaway, now into the Kreisel curve. No looping, nice line, very smooth. This is the form that if you're looking for up-and-comers looking the sport of doubles, look at their form. Very nice positioning, head back, feet down. Shaving those thousands of a second that are required to become number one. Well, here you see the current leaders as they look ahead, and Berendt and Krause have moved into first place. So Hans-Jörg Raffel and Norbert Huber will win the silver medal, and Stefan Krause and Jan Berendt, who have won the last two races on the World Cup circuit, continue what we have to call a hot streak. They have won the world championship. And they're showing their style right here. Look at that form. This is championship winning form right here. And a two-run two total of 129, 850. Another look at the, the style you're talking about, Marilyn. Very compact, very aerodynamic. Perfect. You can't ask for anything better. And a perfect run gets them a gold medal. <laughs> Stefan Krause, Jan Berendt of Germany. 
1993 world champions. They'll be taking home the gold medal from Calgary. There's going to certainly be a pair to look for in Lillehammer. Here are our medalists. Germany gets gold, Italy, silver and bronze. And Canada, a very creditable ninth place finish. The difference between first and second, 1.67 seconds. Yeah, the first round we had uh, two small errors, but uh, the, uh, it was on the start. I, I could not take off enough my, my foot, but uh, we are happy, yeah? The second round was pretty good, and so second place in the World Championship is every time it's a good place, I think. Second place by 0.167 seconds. And there you see the gold medalists celebrating a victory in Calgary. <laughs> Coming up, the men's singles, led by the great German slider, Georg Hackel. There are two good reasons why people who work and play in the cold and wet swear by Sorel boots. One is the superior warmth of Sorel's thick felt liners. Two is incredible high quality waterproof rubber bottoms bonded to rugged water repellent uppers. If there's a better way to keep your feet warm and dry than Sorel boots, it doesn't involve being outside. Sorel boots by Kaufman, what warm and dry is all about. This cereal gets a major penalty for boring. Come on, when I'm up at five for practice, I need a taste hit to get me going. But what can you expect? They're only flakes. Hmm, these are great. Simple. This cereal really scores. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. This breakfast just went into overtime. Taste them again for the first time. When is an empty box not an empty box? Hmm? When it's a box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Ta -da! And it has valuable grocery coupons printed inside. Save money all year with specially marked boxes of Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Say, that is one beautiful looking car. Yes, it most certainly is. Excuse me, but um, what, what's that small black speck just above the roof? Oh, well, that would be the Civic Sedan's exceptionally small monthly payment. Oh, uh huh. Isn't that an awfully small price for such a big looking car? Yes, it most certainly is. Announcing the Now or Never event on Now at your local Honda dealers. With impressively small specs on the classic Accord sedan. I think you've figured it out. Thank you. Now, Emily. Let's go. Okay. There are those days when it is especially nice to come home to the goodness of Campbell's. Hi, Emily. Hi, Nathan and Mom. Thanks, Emily. This is great. Welcome back. Just to update you now on what is being called the worst winter storm to hit the U.S. Atlantic coast since 1888. There has been one to three feet of snow throughout most of the region with high winds. The state of Alabama has virtually come to a dead stop. One million Americans are without power right now. There have been five states which have declared a state of emergency. And we have for you just a partial list of some of the events which have been postponed today. Um, all the airports in the New York area, for example, have been knocked out. All the airports have been knocked out, canceling 2,000 flights. Now let's get back to Luge. Lugeing is a wintertime sport. An old man winter has taken over at Canada Olympic Park in Calgary. It is snowing heavily on the Luge run as we're set for the second run of the men's singles competition. How will it affect the competition? Well, how will it affect this man? One of the top names in the men's singles, Georg Hackel of Germany. He'll be going for gold and he'll be chased by Wendell Suko of the United States. Suko had a tremendous first run and made a name for the U.S. men's team, propelling himself one step closer to the first ever medal podium appearance by an American slider. And the dark horse from Italy, Armin Zugler, maintains the third place standard that he set during the final training runs. That surprised the international luge community. And now Zogler threatens to take bronze after the first run. 
Georg Hockel, the 1992 Olympic gold medalist, has a personal best performance on the track at Canada's Olympic Park. He's the only men's slider to beat severe conditions, setting a track record, capturing first place after run number one. And Canada's Harrington Telford is on course for a personal best himself at the World Championships. He was 15th after the first run, en route to his best result ever, perhaps at a World Championship. Well, this may look like a seance. It's not. It's Harrington getting ready for his second run, visualizing every turn, every nuance. Here's a talent, Marilyn. That's clear, but one that's been unrealized so far. Well, 1992 was disappointing for Harrington, but 92 was 92. He's looking ahead to Lily Hamner in 94, but this time a new strategy. New strategy of perhaps removing some of the pressure. Uh, that was my problem before I trained so hard and worked so hard all the time that I felt that I owed it to myself, you know, to perform and, and people expected me to and I always really strive to do my best and I think a lot of times I went overboard and uh, tried maybe a little too hard and, and uh, put a lot of pressure on myself. So in that case, you know, when you work that hard and you always expect that, sometimes you make mistakes because you're, tr you know, you, you try too hard and uh, I think it's difficult to say what would happen if I trained the whole time, but but I didn't, and things worked out for me. So, you know, I have to take that as a positive sign that uh, you know, no matter how I trained or what I did, that it worked out in the end, and I think the end justifies the means. Well, each athlete has to find his own way, a new strategy, a new objective, and for Harrington Telford, this seems to be working for 1993, so that we'll have to see what's gonna happen in the future. Harrington was 15th after the first run, off to a good start here in the second run. Let's see how he does. Well, the World Championship race is important for Harrington. Since he's not sliding full time, he needs to place here in the top 17 at a World Championship. Then he's going to have to prove himself next year. He's like sliding very well right here. He's got great form. I think for any up-and-coming athlete interested in the sport of luge, look at Harrington Telford. Great form. He's the, really the right build for the sport. Very long, very lean. Very good driver. Having a bit of problem in the curve. He's got to hold back, hold that position into that final curve. And uh, number one, of course, as he's the first slider down the hill in the second run, Harrington Telford. A two-run total of 133-177, which is the benchmark now, and everybody will be shooting against that, including Robert Munzenreiter of Austria. The men going down 14 curves. Talking to the, the sliders prior to the event and talking about the course, they love the top end of this course. They love the speed. They love the speed, it's very tight, it's challenging. It starts to slow down after the Chrysler. They pick up all their speed into that straightaway, zoom into the Chrysler with four Gs, a tremendous amount of force, and then it sort of slows down. So it's a bit of an anticlimactic run for them at the uh, back, half, back half of it. And where is the race won? Is it one at the top or can it be one at the bottom? It's, everything is done at the top. Top two thirds, that's where it counts. Ooh, a shade too high in that curve. That would certainly cost them a bit of time into that final curve now, into coming into home. Well, Robert Monsonreiter has moved into first place, putting Telford down into second place with his run as we look back up to the top, and Duncan Kennedy of the United States, who was 13th after the first run. Duncan Kennedy, certainly a disappointment for the American team. He was, should have been leading for the men. Wendell Succo has taken over. But it's one race, one race in many of the World Cup circuit. But an important race, the World Championships. Well, it's the race, and that's the thing. Let's see how he does here in the second run then. 13th after the first run. Well, he didn't hold anything back. He really went full out on that start. A strong had, competitor. Had the best, best start of anybody here in the second run. Again, a product of the youth development program in Lake Placid, 
I remember Duncan Kennedy as a junior when I was pretty well finishing up my career in the sport of luge, and there's such a transformation of Duncan Kennedy. Well, we're seeing the result of a facility, and they hope that that kind of result will eventually transform in Canada through the facility at uh, Canada Olympic Park here. Well, it's happening bit by bit in Calgary with the development program. Whoa, a little bit too high in that curve. That will cost him some time. Coming into home, we'll have to look at his time and his splits. Well, he's in second place, so Monson Ryder remains the leader. But it's still early, Ron. Second place with still the top sliders to come. And the snow continues to fall. It certainly didn't affect the performance of Harrington Telford, who had a terrific run. He's with Marilyn right now. It's still early as far as right now, as far as the decision for Lily Hamner, but your positioning right now looks very good. It's possible that if I keep my place, uh, I can qualify, but uh, you know, that, you know, it's a race, anything can happen. The track gets beat up, the snow can stop. So there's a lot of big things, but being first off probably helped me. There's not so much snow on the track, so that was good. This is Sergei Danilin of Russia. Bit of a story behind this slider. Sergei actually invented the toe pointers. Toe pointers were used for the men to enable their toes to be pointed in the aerodynamic position with an elastic band tied to the toe and then cuffed up to the calf muscle. Uh, but now toe pointers are not allowed. But women point their toes. Why is that? Well, it's more natural, Ron. I don't think we have that much of a problem. For men, it's a bit of a difficulty. Flexibility problem that men have a pointing bit. their toes? They want to concentrate on other things besides pointing their toes. All right. Sergey Danila. He's fifth at this particular stage as he's in his second run here with no toe pointer. Good. Good into that straightaway, starting that cries again. They're at their maximum speed right now in this 270 degree curve. And from this point on, they start losing their speed. You want to make sure that their feet do not touch the ice because that's going to cost them some time. Coming home now into that finish curve. Sergey Danilin, time of 46.398 in the second run, puts him in fourth place. Sergey Danilin in fourth place after his second run. The leader at this point, Robert Monsenreiter of Austria, but yet to come, two of the greatest in the sport. The Olympic silver medalist from Austria, Marcus Proak. He won that silver medal in Alberville last February. And he'll be going up against the gold medalist from Germany, Georg Hackel. Your Nissan dealer brings you the biggest sale in the universe, to the best of our knowledge. The incredibly reliable Sentra now comes with no charge air conditioning for just $12,495. The rugged hard body with the most horsepower and best fuel economy in its class is now just $8,995. And on these and most other Nissans, special 5.8% financing over 48 months is available too. It's the biggest sale in the universe. On now at your Nissan dealer. Hurry before the rest of the universe beats you to it. Fact. One in five Canadians has some form of respiratory problem. Fact. More than 150 people are admitted to hospital each day for treatment of asthma. Fact. Smoking is the single largest preventable cause of death in Canada. Fact. Over 27,000 Canadians will die of respiratory disease this year alone. Prevention through research and education. Support the Lung Association. I never used to tell people I work for IBM. They figure that we're the blue suitors, the big corporate giant. Uh, I've been working in education for about two and a half years. We could take this into a pain program and we could put mustaches on everybody. <laughs> the kids are just amazing. They take to it like ducks to water. What do you do on your computer? Games. 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 We work as a partnership. You got upside down, yeah? No, it's supposed to be upside oh. down. And we're going to do something called multimedia. Everybody make a monkey noise. <laughs> I got a couple of coffees. When Bill's with me, he's a navigator. Listen, which way is it to Blackstar? Uh, 10 miles. The fact that I can come out and help them get to be a master of the technology, it just shocks them. We are definitely much more approachable than we used to be, and we really are trying to put the customer first. More and more, we're becoming a services company rather than the computer company of the past.
Welcome back to CTV Sports Control. I guess we're getting a little spoiled, but you know what? Canadians didn't win any medals today at the World Figure Skating Championships. This is unheralded 15-year-old Oksana Bayul of the Ukraine, and she moved up from second after the short program to win gold today in Prague. The top three, you see them there. Surya Bonley took the uh, silver, Lu Chen the bronze. Karen Preston held her own to finish eighth. Josie Schwinnard fell on her first jump and tumbled from fourth to finish ninth. Now let's get back to Luch. The Olympic flame still burns over Canada Olympic Park and the Olympic spirit is still alive in the sport of luging. Men's singles competition, Marcus Prock of Austria, who was ninth after his first run, the silver medalist in Alberville at the Olympics. Disappointed, I'm sure, off the first run's results. Not as strong as I'm sure he would like, but we have to keep in mind for Marcus Kroc, he's on a new sled. He retired his sled called Susie. He had it for about seven years. You get attached to something like that, and now he had to really sort of trade it in, bring a new sled, so he's working with it. Being with the World Championship, he's not doing a bad job with the sled. He's a good driver, uh, lots of experience, lots of depth. Well, Manson Ryder it was the leader here. Brock seems to be taking a run at him right now, having a terrific run in his second tour down the Canada Olympic Park Luge run. Nice form, getting into that final curve, coming into that home stretch to home. And second overall, Marcus Brook. So he has gone from ninth to second with an excellent run, this Austrian silver medalist. And Gerhard Gleischer of Austria, tied for sixth after the first run. You talked about sleds, uh, Marilyn, uh, and having one for seven years. You don't keep a racing car for seven years. Designs change. They don't change much in this sport? They certainly do change. I mean, even though Marcus Prock had a sled for seven years, there are certain things that are maybe would be changed, whether it's the bridges or the kufins or the steels, but you get a certain sense of comfort with that sled. At some point, you've got to sort of trade it in and start anew. You're always constantly testing new elements of the sled. The science of the sled design is very important. Well, Susie is retired, uh, mounted on a wall, no doubt, somewhere. But we're watching now Gerhard Gleischer as he currently is rated fifth at this stage in his run. And jumped up to second on that bottom stage of the, the run. So Gerhard Gleischer with a good run, the Austrian, at 132.576 for two runs. Gerhard Gleischer of Austria. Rennie Friedel of Germany, who is tied with Gleischer for sixth place. See how well he does. Rennie Friedel is very comfortable on this track. In fact, he did very well here on a previous World uh, Cup event. Likes this course. Nice form. The Germans once again exhibiting excellent aerodynamic positioning. Ooh, into that straightaway, hitting that wall. That will lose a little bit of time going through the Kreisel. Good transition out. That brushing sound that you hear, feet dropping onto the ice. Now he's in sixth place right here. We saw a drop from fifth to second on the final stage. He dropped from sixth to fourth. Seems like they're picking up speed at the latter stages now of the run as if conditions might be changing a little bit. Look at the exit of Renner Friedel out of that curve. Nice, smooth entrance into the next. Nice transition. And the snow continues to fall here at Canada Olympic Park. It seems to be affecting the competition. Ten sliders go down, and then the maintenance crews have to come out. And this is what they do. And you can see the heavy snowfall. This is after only ten runners. It's affected the competition. American Duncan Kennedy certainly isn't happy with the way the luck of the draw went for him. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't, uh, I don't feel this is a very fair race. Uh, the conditions are absolutely horrible. Um, I feel they should have swept every five instead of every ten. The wind is really bad. Uh, but they can't make excuses. I mean, everyone has the same conditions, and it may be luck of the draw, it may not. Well, for the Austrians, the luck of the draw, not too bad. They are one, two, three in the current standings. 
And with Duncan Kennedy on the sidelines, as far as the United States hopes for medals are concerned, it rests on this man's shoulders. Wendell Succo of Michigan. Will he be able to take his place in Luge American history? Hey, Dad, check out my new car. How can you afford this? But, Dad... The all-new Toyota Corolla. In my day, we knew the value of a dollar. Didn't I teach you anything about money? But, Dad... Roomier, quieter, and now a better value than ever. What have you got to say for yourself? It's a Corolla! A Corolla? Why didn't you say so? Come on, kids, let's motor. Did we mention more power? The all-new Corolla by Toyota. A welcome addition to any family. <laughs> Hey, guys. Hey, Jerry. Early for you, 12.30. No hurry, Hank. Got some lunch on the way over. I'll just settle in here with this nice big mac. You take your time, because I got these uh, two all-beef patties and special sauce to work with. And I know Charlie there's got to look good for that wedding. When you've just got to have a Big Mac, you're having a Big Mac attack. What you want is what you get. Two Big Macs, please. I got this one, Charlie. And McDonald's today. You know, I've messed up on a few relationships in my life, but there's one that's lasted over 35 years with a lot of help from Quaker State. It's tough on wear, tough on sludge. So Quaker State and I are planning on a meaningful relationship with my new car. So why don't you do the same with your new car's engine? And Quaker State will guarantee it for 400,000 kilometers or 10 years in writing. You think if I gave Lonnie the Quaker State deal, she'd give me the same guarantee? <laughs> Quaker State is one top motor oil. Good news when I can find it. Can you believe this? Chance to make a decent return on a buck. Ten percent. What if rates go even higher? Oh. Good news from a bank. I imagine that. Oh, baby. Can't stand still. I keep on working, and the hours will keep on moving. Yeah, looking for the sun. A lifetime of driving, never but the feeling zone. I can't stand still. Ford F Series trucks. They've kept Canada moving with the best-selling pickups for over 27 years. Tools of the trade, and they certainly get loving care from the people who are there to service them. Second run of the men's singles competition at Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, and you're looking at Norbert Huber of Italy, part of a sliding Huber family that includes three losers and one bobsledder, and they're operating both singles and doubles. Let's take a look at the star here. Very strong. The Italians are very strong in singles. Nice positioning. When we were in Albertville, I had an opportunity to speak to Norbert, and I asked him maybe when he finishes his career in losing, will he decide to join up with his brother and become a four-man bob team? I don't think they're quite ready for that yet. <laughs> but they are bouncing back and forth between the, the doubles and the singles and winning medals in both the categories. And he is number one right now. Let's see how he does through the bottom portion of the course. Nice transition of the curves. Very well executed. Drops back to third and comes back on to be first. So Norbert Huber has taken over the lead from Robert Munson Ryder. A two run total of 132.463. And we're gonna get a chance here to see the brother, the younger brother, the youngest brother of the family at 27 year old. This is Billy Huber, fourth after the first run. Look at the concentration. He's got to shoot himself right off those start handles. Again, but the men start 14 curves. It's 1,251 meters long. They're experiencing G-forces of about four. If you're, if you're ahead, 
actually weighs about nine pounds, so four times that with that pressure. It's about 36 pounds. So you have to imagine trying to hold your head through those sort of forces. And they're going to feel that in this curve, in the chrysler, 270 degrees. Billy Hoover got up to be first. Let's see if he can maintain that position through this portion. Has dropped down to third now. But again, they seem to pick it up again right at the final stages of the of the run. His speed seems to pick up, and it happened again. And he's moved into first place ahead of his brother. So we've gone from Norbert Hoover, the leader, to Billy Hoover, the leader. Not what you'd call a three-point landing there. Armin Zuckler of Italy, third after the first run. Nobody really expected Armin to be in that top five grouping. But again, this is a good indication of the depth of the Italian team. Yes, they have their season sliders at the top, but there are those juniors right behind forcing them, forcing the, the top ones to be competitive. It's the same example that's going to happen with Canada having this uh, track in their backyard and the youth development program that's being established rooted through the entire system. Most of the sliding that goes on in Italy is in the Cortina area, is that correct? The, it's in the, in the north part, but again, the Europeans have access to a phenomenal amount of tracks, so they have that experience, not only in their home tracks, but in other tracks around the circuit. And that's part of the key, not only establishing uh, consistency on your home track, but developing the skills on other tracks. Well, this is one of the young up-and-comers, Armin Zugler, as we look ahead to Lillehammer next February. This young man, who is currently third, and is certainly going to finish in the top five. Tremendous finish for him, and another Italian doing well here at this World Championship. The way out, there's Wilfried Huber. And as they weigh his sled, Billy and Norbert, know that at least the family is going to take home a medal in the singles competition. And back up at the top of the course, Wendell Suko of the United States, who was second after the first run, a rather sensational second. Wendell Suko has come in here with very little pressure. Everybody's been looking at Duncan Hen Kennedy, especially after training. Everybody was looking, yeah, Duncan's got the possibility here. He's got all the key elements playing in his favor. Wendell Suko's come in here, a very strong slider, and has put everything together. You need two solid runs. Duncan Kennedy blew it on that first run. Disadvantaged, he says, by the snow, not having the sweep in favor for him, but Wendell Suko clean, solid runs. Well, this is not, as we've mentioned throughout this competition, a slider from the United States and from Lake Placid. He's from Marquette, Michigan, and he has learned his craft around Marquette. And already he's in first place. Let's see if he can hold this all the way through now. Wendell Suko, if he wins this, this will be a sensational finish, not only for the overall sliding world, but for the United States program itself. This is a real boost to the Americans for Wendell Suko and the sport of luge. And he is number one. Wendell Suko is number one. What a terrific story. Congratulations all around, not only for Wendell Suko, but for the establishment of the American Luge Association, for their coaches, for their managers, for the development program that they've established because Wendell Suko is a product of that system. Well, the worst that can happen to Wendell Suko is a silver medal now, because up at the top of the hill is the man who can beat him, Georg Hackel of Bischofswiesen, Germany. Georg Hackel, a very strong competitor, a seasoned slider. He knows the job at task, what he has to do. He's seen Wendell Suko's run. He has to pull out all the stops. Notice that he had a sixth place out of that start. Not a good start for a slider on this level. Georg is, really doesn't like the Calgary track that much. He has complained about it during training, that he's found it bumpy. Good positioning, setting himself up for that Chrysler curve, but it's going to be very hard for him to make up what he lost at the, stop, at the start. Wendell Suko of the United States and the rest of the team looking up the hill right now. He has dropped back to eight, but remember, they close it up at the bottom part. There's Wendell Suko. He's aware of what's going on. He can he knows, see the monitors. He... he knows what's happened now. Second place overall, and Wendell Suko, what a sensation. 
the 1993 men's world champion, the first United States slider to win a gold medal. And Georg Hackel consulting quickly on the run with the technical advisors. A quick word, he's going to be the silver medalist. Quite a story. Well, you just heard it from Georg Hako. Warren Suko is the Beltmeister, the world champion. This is a great moment for the American Luge program. Wendell Suko, a product of that development system. And the final standings with Suko up on top. And Marilyn is with Suko. Talk about his run. Wendell Suko, I'm just wondering if you can give me your emotion as the first American to win a world championship medal. I don't, I don't think I've even captured it yet. I don't know. I, I, don't, I really couldn't answer that. I don't, I'm ecstatic. I don't know what I'm feeling. On to Lilyhammer? Yeah, definitely on to Lilyhammer. Thank you. And while there is joy in the American camp, in the Canadian camp, the knowledge that there's a lot more work ahead. Harrington Telford finished in the top 15, a good result for him. So let the celebrations begin. The United States losing team has just won its first world championship gold medal. And Wendell Suko is on his way to pick up the hardware right now. From Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, I'm Ron Roosh along with Marilyn Vestigo. We bid you so long from the Luge World Championships in Calgary. Well, thanks very much, Ron. Uh, just as an aside, Harrington Telford broke the Canadian record on his second run today. Well, don't go away. In just a moment, we'll come back and talk a little track and field.